Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jacob Fisher and today we're going to talk about going to the Bahamas for $500. If you'd like to hear more videos like this, make sure to subscribe down below and make sure to smash that like button. Okay, I'll admit it's easy to go to the Bahamas and live there for five days if you have the right amount of points. Four nights, five days, 80,000 points from Hyatt, 22,000 points from Southwest. That's 102,000 points. That's easy. But what if you don't have any points? Can you stay in the Bahamas for five days using only $500? Let's find out. First off, the peak season to visit is mid-December to mid-April. However, you can find better deals if you go outside those times. Go during the off season. Plus, you deal with less tourists and you may be able to find more local events. The best part about traveling is being able to experience the culture that has been around for so long in different parts of the world. It's fantastic to be able to see all these places and experience the culture that's happening there. Let's go right into how we can stay there with Hyatt and Southwest real quick. I keep mentioning Hyatt and Southwest. Keep an eye out for future videos on my thoughts on those two companies because I think they might be the best places to use your points. Hyatt booked from March 16th to March 20th is $336 per night. The same place booked May 18th to the 22nd is $221 per night. If you book using points, they are both 20,000 points per night. Hyatt doesn't quite have the off-season pricing like Hilton or Marriott does yet. Booking with dollars already saved you $115 a night. Over four nights there, you saved $460. Let's take a look at flights. I've had to adjust the dates slightly because there were no wanna get away fares from Southwest. For March 17th through the 22nd flying Southwest, it'll cost you $795 for flights. For May 17th to the 22nd, it will cost you $633. Now the thing about Southwest is that their point values change on the dollar. It's not like United, well what used to be United where you could book one-way things for 12,500 points. It changes about 84 cents per point, I think it is. However, the point sky rates Southwest's actual cent ratio as 1.5 cents per point. As you can see, off-season is already so much cheaper if you were spending more than $500, that is. However, what if you don't have any points to use? First off, get a card that does. Check out my travel video for some recommendations right there. But if you don't have any and you want to spend five days in the Bahamas for $100 a day, including hotels, what do you do? The dates I'm going to use for the rest of this are May 10th to the 14th. That will be five days and four nights in the Bahamas during the off season. I'll be honest here because Spirit and Frontier don't offer flights to Nassau. You have to fly one of the major carriers. United and American both cost over $500 for flights. Southwest, you can do $513 round trip or about 26,000 points and $120 in fees. For United, for 42,500 miles and $124 in fees, Delta, for 34,000 miles and $120 in fees. Keep in mind, all these flights originate from Denver. If you live in Los Angeles and want to go to Natsu, then right now there is a sale for 18,000 sky miles round trip. That's such a good deal. There are also various other deals I found on the points guy over there, all for nice little amounts of points. Right, so flights are near impossible to do if you want to do $500 all together. However, the hotels and food we can do. Let's move on to the hotels or hostels because that's where we're gonna have to stay. Through hostelworld.com, you will find two hostels offering dorms for $44 and $45 a night. The cheaper one actually being closer to the water. You get a lot of good views out of this one right on the coast. That leaves you with $66 a day or $42 a day if you deduct those fees from the airlines, which is about 120 to spend on food and activities. If you're going to the beach, then you'll pay nothing. That's just how it, you can spend your whole time at the beach and just enjoy your vacation and still have $42 a day left for food. Some of the top beaches are Gold Rock Beach, Cabbage Beach, Blue Lagoon Island, and Pink Sand Beach. Blue Lagoon, you'll need to book a package to get there for around $69, so that would really eat into your budget. Let's avoid that one. Anyway, to get to your hostel, to Cabbage Beach, you should take a jitney. 
it's public transportation that'll cost you anywhere from $1 to $8. Let's say you do that every day. Let's take out $4 for that, just right in the middle. Now you have $30 a day left for food. If you go to the grocery store every day, then you're able to get food for cheaper. Bahamas food is more expensive because it's on an island. It's just harder to get food there, costs more, your costs go up. I actually found this site that says Bahamas food on a budget traveler will cost you about $17 a day. Now you have 21 a day left. That's still a decent amount. Let's go on that adventure. I like snorkeling and diving. Let's see what we can do with that. We have $105 left to spend. We could either do the single tank dive through Miller's Dive Shop or the half day snorkel trip for $70. All of them include mask, snorkels, tank, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Keep in mind, you should not do any scuba diving 24 hours before you fly just because of the risk associated with nitrogen bubbles getting into your bloodstream. Scuba dive on one of the first days if you can. That would be preferable. You won't have the chance to die. <laughs> now here's another thing. You can bring your own mask and snorkel if you have one. I don't, but you could get one. And then you could just snorkel around the beaches and different coves if you want. That would be the most effective adventure for your money. So, did we do the Bahamas for $500? Let me know in the comments down below if you think this was a successful or would have been a successful trip. Are you going to take it? When I imagine the Bahamas, I think relaxation. I could be happy with this itinerary. Relax on the beach, take a small trip underwater, and just enjoy my time in the sun. Plus, if you're able to check out local food shacks or shop for unique items, I would say that'd be a perfect way to spend my time. So yes, I think this trip counts as $500 in the Bahamas. We're just gonna chalk up those pesky points you have to get to just getting a card because there's welcome bonuses on pretty much every card and you can get enough points to be able to fly to the Bahamas twice round trip. If you grab one of Southwest's credit card, I think they offer 40,000 points for a bonus offer for signing up. Again, you only need 22,000 to get there, so you got an actual 18,000 points lying around. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and a comment if you are thinking about taking the trip yourself. Also, let me know your travel tips if you have any for the Bahamas or other Caribbean destinations. Until next time.